The cost to attend college has gone up. A lot. By some accounts, private nonprofit university tuition is up over 130% in the last 20 years, and public four-year university tuition is up over 200% in the same period. But how much did it really go up? I'm Jeff Kalik, and in this episode of Data Demystified, we're going to learn how to unpack changes in prices over time, get a better intuitive understanding of inflation, and learn just how much more you really are spending to go to college. To understand how prices changed over time, we need to be very careful and make sure that we are comparing apples to apples. To be a bit too literal, if I told you that the price of fruit was up 100% since last year, but then compared the price of an apple a year ago to the price of a pineapple today, that would pretty obviously be an unfair way to compare the price of fruit in general. If we want to know how the price of fruit changed, we need to make sure we're comparing, literally, apples to apples. The exact same thing is true for prices of college tuition. If I want to know how tuition costs changed over time, I need to make sure I'm making a fair comparison. In this video, we're going to unpack the price of tuition in two ways. First, a bit specific to tuition, we're going to talk about the difference between published and net tuition. And second, we're going to talk about inflation-adjusted prices, something that applies to any comparison in prices over time. So let's start with what tuition is and what it isn't. First, tuition does not include what is typically considered fees and room and board. The same basic story applies for those, so we could certainly roll them into our total costs, but to keep things simple, we're only going to look at tuition, or what directly goes to earning your education. So let's start by looking at what is known as published tuition. This is the price that you find listed on universities' websites and reported by places like US News & World Report. Here is the average price paid by students each year over the last 20 years for public four-year universities like Penn State or UCLA, and here it is for private, nonprofit four-year universities like Carnegie Mellon or NYU. It's very clear that over 20 years, those prices have gone way up. To be clear, some students paid more and some paid less, but this is the average. If you want a deeper dive into how to think about averages, I have another video on the topic that I'll link to below. Anyway, for public universities, we've gone from published tuition of about $3,300 to just over $10,000, a 207% increase. For private universities, we've gone from published tuition of $15,600 to just under $37,000, a 135% increase. That's a lot. I do want to point out that those prices are not adjusted for inflation, but we'll get to that soon enough. The question we started with was whether these were the real increases in the cost of tuition. They're not. One of the things that has dramatically changed in the college tuition game is the same strategy that all of us have seen in retail stores. Mark something up, and then put it on sale. In stores, it's not uncommon to see a product on sale for, say, 20% off, only to find out that the store actually just raised the price enough to make the sale wash for them in the end. The idea is that people respond to discounts and think that 20% off is a good deal, so they jump on it. And even though college tuition is much more expensive than most things we buy in stores, the same logic applies. What colleges and universities do is raise tuition, but then give more and more people scholarships of some sort. In fact, a recent report cited something that like 89% of students receive some sort of tuition discount. The idea is that when admitted students see that a college is giving them a scholarship, they feel like the college really wants them to come, even though, in reality, almost everyone is getting some kind of scholarship or discount. So that means that the published tuition you see isn't really what students pay. Let's instead take a look at what is called net tuition, or the average amount actually paid by students. Here we see a very different picture. Yes, prices still went up, but very differently for public and private universities. For public universities, net tuition went from about $1,100 to nearly $4,000, or a 250% increase. In other words, in percentage terms, for public universities, net tuition went up even more than published tuition. That's not quite true for private universities. For them, net tuition went from about $8,800 to about $14,000 a 64% increase. In other words, students at private universities are paying more, but that very large increase in published tuition masks that students also appear to be getting a lot more in terms of scholarship assistance, making the net tuition increase a lot smaller. Okay, so now we're looking at net tuition, but as I mentioned earlier, this is all not adjusted for inflation. But what does that even mean? Why do we need to adjust for inflation? To understand that, we're going to take a step back for a second and briefly understand what inflation is and why we care about it when comparing costs and prices of things over time. Before we do that, if you like what you see, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. I'm also trying very hard to reach as many people as I can so that more of us can better live and engage in this data-rich world. So if you can tweet, post on Facebook or Reddit, or just share this with anyone you can, I would greatly appreciate it. With that said, 
Let's get back to understanding how to compare prices of things over time. You've probably seen something like this in a movie about a long and distant past. Yep, five cents for a can of Coke. Obviously, that's not true today. So we can say that the price of Coke has gone up since whenever this photo was taken. But was five cents the same in 1886 when Coke first launched as it is today? Not at all. In fact, in the 1880s, a typical manufacturing job earned about a buck 50 a day or $430 a year. In other words, you could buy a whole lot more with five cents in the 1880s than you could today. There are a lot of reasons why prices and wages go up over time, which is the topic for another video, but we typically call this type of increase inflation. So if we want to compare the price of a can of Coke from 1886 to today, we need a way to take into account the fact that money isn't worth the same now as it was then. That's where something called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, comes in. Basically, the CPI is a measure of the price of a bunch of products, thousands of them actually, that we can look to to understand how valuable money is at any given point in time. If the same, say, $100 can't buy the same amount of that basket of goods today as it could a few years ago, we say that there was inflation. That basket includes all sorts of things, like the rent you pay, medical expenses, food, travel, recreation, and so on. The idea is that as those things increase in price, for whatever reason, we use that as a measure of how much inflation has gone up. So inflation is just a reflection of how much less the same $100 can buy you over time. If you want to figure out how much any amount of money was worth at any point in recent history, I'll link to a great inflation calculator that the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics makes freely available to anyone. So let's look at one quick example to make inflation and adjustment in prices really clear. In 1980, the average cost of a new car in the United States was about $7,500. And in 2015, 35 years later, it was just over $25,000. That's an increase of almost $18,000, or 234%. But at the same time, median income went up from $17,500 to $57,670, or an increase of about 229%. In fact, if we look at the CPI, that basket of goods, inflation during that period was 207%. In other words, yes, prices for cars went up, but so did income, and so did the price of everything. When we compare prices across time, we absolutely must consider that the value of the same amount of money changes over time. For this car example, what we can do is recalculate the cost of a car in 1980 to reflect the fact that the same amount of money bought more in 1980 than it does in 2015. We do that by realizing that if inflation was up 207% in that time period, we need to adjust our price in 1980 by that same 207%. If we do that, we see that the price of a car in 1980 was actually just over $23,000. That doesn't mean that people actually spent $23,000 on a new car in 1980, they still spent the same $7,500. But what it does is allow us to look back at 1980 and say what that $7,500 would buy in 2015. Now we can compare those two prices fairly. We see that prices adjusted for inflation for new cars did go up, but not by the 234% we saw before. Rather, they went up just $2,080 or about 9%. That's a very different picture from what we had when we compared those original prices. Critically, this 9% increase is a real increase in cost. As in, after we take into account inflation, prices did in fact go up. Now, compared to 1980, cars offer a whole lot more today, including better fuel efficiency, higher safety standards, and let's not kid ourselves, a much nicer aesthetic. So maybe that 9% increase is actually well worth it for all we're now getting. But that's also a different point for a different video. Now that we understand how to correctly adjust prices for inflation, let's return to college tuition and see how much that has actually gone up. As a reminder, we're going to look at net tuition, or what was actually paid over the last 20 years for both public and private four-year universities. Before adjusting for inflation, we saw this, a 135% increase in net tuition for private universities and a 207% increase for public universities. Now let's take inflation into account and adjust those prices to all be in terms of today's dollars. For example, if we go back to 1999, net tuition for public universities was about $1,100. While in 2019, that same $1,100 would buy just shy of $1,700 in stuff. Inflation went up about 53% in this 20-year period, so we need to reflect that when comparing tuition costs between 1999 and 2019. When we do that for all the values, we get this. Boy, is this a different story. Now looking at net tuition and adjusting for inflation, we see the tuition has gone up, but not nearly as much as we said before. In fact, for private universities, tuition has only gone up 7%. I mean, it's still a lot of money to spend each year on tuition, but at least over the last 20 years, tuition hasn't really gone up that much when we account for inflation. The same isn't quite so true for public four-year universities. Even after we consider scholarships and adjust for inflation, net tuition has more than doubled, increasing 130% over 20 years. That's a very real and very large increase in cost. Yes, it's not the 207% increase we started with when looking at published tuition and failing to adjust for inflation, 
but it is still a whole lot. So now we have the full story. Public universities, those funded in part by tax dollars, have shifted the expense of providing higher education from taxpayers to students. We can certainly debate the merits of doing this, but it's very clear that if you were a student in 1980, it was a lot more financially feasible to go to a public college than if you were a student today. On the other hand, the story about the ever-increasing costs of private universities just doesn't seem to bear out. Yes, tuition has gone up, but only by about 7% across a 20-year period. That's not nothing, but it's a lot less than over-sensationalized news stories like to report. More generally, I hope you realize that this is a recipe for how we should be thinking about changes in anything having to do with money over time. We can't just ignore that prices and wages tend to rise with time as a result of inflation. Rather, when considering how something like the price of a product changes with time, we need to adjust those prices using something like the Consumer Price Index to reflect that the value of money typically decreases with time. If you found this interesting, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to this channel. I'd also like to give a quick shout out to Daniel for suggesting this topic in the comments of a previous video. More generally, if there's a topic in the world that you'd like to see me create a video on, please leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to create content meant just for you, my viewers.